After the Lafayette Square incident of 2020, where law enforcement officers used tear gas to clear Black Lives Matter protesters from the grounds, General Mark Milley, the chief of staff of the Army, wrote an undelivered resignation letter to former President Donald Trump, according to new reporting, in which he said, It is my belief that you are doing great and irreparable harm to my country. I believe that you have made a concerted effort over time to politicize the United States military. I thought that I could change that. I've come to the realization that I cannot and I need to step aside and let someone else try to do that. So this is all from a really big piece in The New Yorker called Inside the War Between Trump and His Generals. It has a lot of reporting on, on Milley, on John Kelly, and other people who were um, combative with Trump, uh, didn't have a good relationship with Trump. Now, this is the kind of piece where it's people recalling things that they claimed happened in conversations with Trump, where tr Trump obviously had no input in this article, was not interviewed for it, didn't mm -hmm. participate in it, these generals clearly did. So I'm not saying I don't believe these, many of these interactions happened. They certainly could have happened. But because th this is a journalism problem where sympathetic subjects of interviews hmm. can craft and sculpt their responses so they sound smarter and more uh, better with their words hmm. uh, in, in, than they actually were at the time. Like, I don't believe some of these quotes exactly the way they're written. So give me, give me an example of something that seems kind of too good to be true if um, you can. Sure. Uh, so tr according to this, Trump said that he didn't want any wounded, um, formerly wounded servicemen in this in this parade. Um, he said it doesn't look good for me. He explained this is from the New York. He explained with distaste that at the Bastille Day parade, there had been several formations of injured veterans, including wheelchair bound soldiers who had lost limbs in battle. And Kelly could not believe what he was hearing. Those are the heroes, he told Trump. In our society, there's only one group of people who are more heroic than they are, and they are buried over in Arlington. Like, it's... it's. So, okay, so I hear that, and I hear the Trump side of it, and that sounds fairly consistent with Trump's attitude towards people. Absolutely believe Trump would people. behave that way. Yeah. Okay. So your concern is that there's been a little bit of a gilding the generals of the lilies make, the gil exactly. for the generals. They're trying to make themselves okay. look good. And they're political actors. They got... Uh, Trump should have told them to take a hike even more than he actually did. Actually, these are the people who kept us in Afghanistan uh, through Obama wanted to get out. We stayed in. They tricked him. Then they tricked Trump, even though Trump said we should get out. Finally, they didn't manage to trick Biden because he'd been around, I guess, the first time they tried to trick everyone. So I'm just sick of taking orders from the, the American people don't want these endless commitments. They lied over and over again. They, they were bad military advisors. They had, you know, trying to accomplish this mission at all costs, even though the American people didn't want it. The, it was not worth it. We were, you know, the blood being spent, the, the money, nobody wants to do it. And they, we stood the course because of because of these people who are bad advisors. So I don't have, yeah. so they're trying to rehabilitate themselves maybe, mm -hmm. and I don't think they deserve that. I think that's perfectly fair. It, what's interesting to me is that hearing that, I'm much more interested in the Trump aspect of it than these military officers. I t completely take your point that we shouldn't respond to this by saying, yes, I love and uplift the generals the way the Democrats have done with so many figures. And the, the media, era, that's exactly what they're trying to do. They, Look at how these responsible military right. people don't they, like they're Trump. They're trying to make heroes out of people like Liz Cheney and right. every, you know, is Every exactly never Trump like Republican now has an MSNBC contract. It is what it is. But at the same time, you know, it, I, I don't want to miss the forest for the trees of the fact that Donald Trump, who is likely going to run for president again, does seem to have a lot of people who are very consistently describing him as someone who is so unsympathetic to uh, disabled people, people who have been literally yeah, injured in our man. wars, that he would do no way around it. Those kind of not a good guy. About veterans, yeah. even and it does strike me that the the generals are doing a little bit of something that, in a different context, is framed as these kind of identity politics wars, where mm -hmm. so many, so often there are people uh, who are liberals who take some genuine instance of a, a kind of a problematic statement about a group and, and use that to kind of rehabilitate, say, well, they said this negative thing about me, therefore I must be rehabilitated, I must be the good actor. And it's not necessarily true, even if the underlying statement is legitimately bad and racist. And I feel myself often in this position where I, I want to say, yes, the, the bad thing was bad, the racist thing was bad, you shouldn't have said that thing, but also reluctant to allow the person's marginalized identity to absolve them from their issues. So a specific example, there were some criticisms that the left made of Lloyd Austin when he was first uh, joined Biden's cabinet, the revolving door, the Raytheon of it all, people mm -hmm. were very critical of that. 
And one of the liberal rejoinders was, how dare you leftist criticize a black man, you know? And there, there does seem to be this like interesting way that there's other kinds of identity politics that are operated on by the, by the right, including being a veteran, including being a farmer, including being from a rural state, a lot of these other kinds of things. And it's interesting to see these battles work themselves out and in similar formats on the right. I wanted to read one more uh, section from this uh, article. Uh, it turned out the generals had rules, standards, and expertise, not blind loyalty. The, like, it's, so, it's just so celebratory of them. The president's loud complaint to John Kelly one day was typical. You effing generals, why can't you be like the German generals? Which generals, Kelly asked. The German generals in World War II, Trump responded. You do know that they tried to kill Hitler three times and almost pulled it off, Kelly said. <laughs> But of course, Trump did not know that. No, no, they were totally loyal to him, the president replied. In his version of history, the generals of the Third Reich has been completely subservient to Hitler. This was the model he wanted for his military. I mean, I take your point that it's a very bold thing for a general to insinuate that generals yeah. kill the president. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I'm sure, I totally believe that exchange went like that. Right, but, but uh, I, I, it's not implausible to me that Donald Trump would right. speak admiringly, even if it's only for Donald Trump saying reasons. crazy things is not the unbelievable yeah. poll part. It's that people firing back with these well-structured quips that makes them sound super intelligent and super knowledgeable at historic world historical events. Well, let me ask like you. Like if he if he if he launched into a Napoleon soliloquy, we'd say, oh yeah, that definitely happened. Well, let me ask you this, Robbie. Do you think that this is the beginning of a kind of skepticism you're going to see from the right of institutions, be it the military? And we're now seeing all the skepticism about the FBI in the aftermath of the Mar-a-Lago raid. Do you think that this is a kind of a staying power of, of institutional skepticism that the left has been embracing for a really long time and warning of these kind of power overreaches um, in the deep state and the military industrial complex. Is this something that's gonna last or is it only a selective bias that exists in the Trump Oh, bubble? well, conservative voters have deep institutional mm. skepticism. They, do, they hate and fear and distrust these institutions and a lot, in a lot of cases for good reason. Mm -hmm. Republican elected officials only pretend to have skepticism of these institutions. We've got Marjorie Taylor Greene posting the American flag upside down. I mean, we've gone, it's like whiplash from the Blue but Lives they, Matter flag they, to they the won't upside vote. down American they flag. They won't change a darn thing. <laughs> I, I, like, I, this is what I said during A Block. I, my yeah. distrust of them, they, it's all talk, all talk. Talk, 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 talk. At the end of the day, they vote to reauthorize the Patriot Act. They always do. So I, I would love if they, if, uh, if the, the legislators need to be made to reflect the basis skepticism of these institutions. But the law, may, so far, the the Republican elected officials are only comfortable reflecting that um, skepticism vis-a-vis -vis defending Donald Trump personally. Yeah. Their, their massive investment, not in the structures, but in Donald Trump himself, uh, thwarts broader reforms that uh, Republicans and actually many on the left, civil libertarian left, would all support everyone doing. So that would be yeah. great if that happens. Well, look, we, I, we've seen in my lifetime that the Republican voters have a great deal of power when they put their mind to it and decide to push back against the establishment. We saw it in the context of the Tea Party. The party, the party as a whole was radically transformed. So we'll see if there's a, some accountability that happens here that could, I think, make some positive changes for the long term and some useful coalition building between uh, the left and the right when it comes to, I think, to your point, the well-founded skepticism. I believe the House GOP or maybe it was the House Judiciary Committee or whatever, some Republican committee or, or party uh, Twitter account I, I saw tweeted about the raid on, on Mar-a-Lago. If, if they can do this to a former sitting president, imagine what they can yes. do to you. I think a lot of American people don't need to imagine what yes. they can do to you. It's being done to them. Yes. They already cared about it. You're the ones who need to get on board. Yes. Not the people. The people know. Yes. Uh, the Brianna Taylors of it all. Yeah, that too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. We actually had a great uh, discussion about that uh, yesterday. I encourage mm -hmm. everyone more interested in that miscarriage of justice, uh, although there is going to be some accountability for those police. Apparently, um, we had a video on that yesterday, so you should check that out. And we'll have more Rising right after this.